exactly 50 years back on this very day, Bhaktivedanta Swami had come over here and spoken at this very auditorium. Vi har tagit de här bidragen på den här workshopen. Det var ju Bhaktivedanta Swamis relation till filosofi och historia i i i allmänhet. Iskon, as we all know, is a movement which was begun in around the 1960s, mid 1960s. But the Gaudiya Vaishnava movement, as we know it, is a far longer tradition. So, as Prabhupada once said, I don't claim uh, that I am a pure devotee or perfect, but my only qualification is that I am trying to follow the instruction of the perfect. Det är intressant var jag att tala om hur det här en gång startade på i början av 1800-talet av Bhaktivinoda Thakur. As our world becomes more and more connected, the exchange between Eastern and Western philosophical traditions increases, displaying our mutual commitment to the exploration of important existential questions. In Sweden, it was a very special time in the beginning of the 70s, very much left-wing and communist influence. We established a temple in uh, Sweden just a few months before, in July. Bhaktivedanta asked what Swedes are interested in. <laughs> and we answer uh, that politics is a topic of great interest. Kunskapen om den här typen av man kallar det för hinduism, men egentligen så är det en tradition som fokuserar på kärlek till Gud i allmänhet och att det finns i alla religioner. Swami Bhaktivedanta's accomplishments mark the first time in history that a Krishna Bhakta successfully trained non-Indians in the orthodox disciplines of the Vaishnava tradition and established communities of Krishna Bhaktas permanently in the fabric of Western culture around the world. Edgar Hemsweig och pratar om själva essensen av detta som är just kärlek till Gud. Whether written, published, spoken formally or informally, I have observed something significant. A basic grasp and distillation of the highest and most essential teaching that Prabhupada offered the world, put in his own simple choice of words, happens to be the phrase, the love of God. Interestingly, Prabhupada recognizes that love itself is an intrinsic constituent element of the self. What the bhaktas that Prabhupada trained are doing is they are worshipping Krishna, of course, Radha, yes, of course, but not just Radha and Krishna. They are worshipping the love between them, which conquers them both. Most philosophical works in Sanskrit sacred literature tend not to be exemplars of uh, poetry. Works of poetry and literary quality tend not to be exemplars of philosophy. The Bhagavata does something amazing, which is to bring these two things together. Prabhupada takes a text that is otherwise very difficult and very dense with centuries of commentary and makes it available in um, a language that the average person can understand. Uh, in his uh, purports, then he'll amalgamate, draw upon the commentary, commentaries of other Vaishnav uh, Acharyas, and then does uh, what a commentator should, which is he makes that material relevant to his audience. There was not so much research or knowledge about Vaishnav philosophy or Vaishnav or theistic Hindu traditions at all before Prabhupada came. But now it's developed and um, become very dynamic. Uh, we must understand that uh, after the passing away of Bhakti Siddhanta, uh, there was a long hiatus when there was almost a stagnation of the movement. And this was countered and this was taken to another step altogether by Prabhupada when he went to the US in 1965. When an area which is stagnating, uh, if you have a flow from the other side, then the entire area 
rejuvenates. It was not as if that he was trying to convert the West. It was, as a, as a humanity, he was trying to bring about a bridge across the world and also rejuvenate the movement in India. The essential teachings were, as I was saying before, is about the principle of love. Even more, not just love of God, but the purification of the heart. And this, is, I see, is the very kernel of everything. He dismantled long-standing historical boundaries in the practice of bhakti. Um, and in dismantling those boundaries, he opened up the opportunity for a community, a Vaishnava community, that had no borders. I mean, the heavy so you at the Makondo online workshop, me at the forskare from hela världen, from USA, from Indien, som för att tala om här sakerna. Så det är en kunskap som har spets, spritts över hela världen och blivit välkänd i den akademiska världen.